The Bottom Line Podcast. I'm Jimmy Finizzi alongside Neil Villapiano. We hope you're doing well. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to listen to us. We really do appreciate it. Before we get started, as always, questions, opinions, you know the deal. On Twitter, at Bottom Line, WMCX, at The NVP Show. Use hashtag Bottom Line. Don't forget to leave a voice message on Anchor as well or Anchor.fm. And please make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel and also leave a like and a comment down below and let us know what you think about what we're going to discuss and also subscribe on Apple, Google, and Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. It is there. Just search for the bottom line podcast, but please make sure that you include my first name, which is Jimmy. So Neil, another new fresh week. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. You know, the sun is shining today. It's a, it's a good day out today. Um, I just saw that New Jersey is one of the three States that's um, on track to, uh, contain COVID-19 completely. So I give a lot of credit to people yes. in the state who have common sense. Um, um, amazing news. Amazing right. news. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really good news. As, 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 a matter, as a matter of fact, that's probably Governor Phil Murphy calling me right now to say, hey, congratulations. <laughs> we're, on, we're on the right track here. So, yeah. well, <laughs> you know, we still have a long way to go, uh, but hopefully we can continue to do what we need to do in order to keep everyone safe. Um, if you, if you are going to go out, just wear a mask. It really isn't that hard. Like, it's really, you know, you know, if you, especially if you have kids, like, just get them a really cool looking one and just like, just deal with it. Just, yeah, you know. no, no, absolutely. And that really, that really is amazing news to hear. I'm very happy that Jersey is on the right track. But again, Neil and I have already said our piece about that. If you want to check it out, please go check out our episode where we talked about the NHL draft lottery and you will know what we are talking about. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about baseball, and you, if you are watching on YouTube, yes, Neil is wearing a Yankee shirt, and he has a Mets background, but there is a logical reason behind it. No, he is not a sports fraud for this. He is a Yankees fan. I want, I want to get that out of the way right now. He is a Yankee fan. But the reason he has a Mets background, again, if you're watching on YouTube, is we're going to be talking about the New York Mets today because the Wilpons actually want to sell what is, is 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 it actually a dream come true for nope. Mets fans here? Could the Wilpons finally be nope. out? Well, nope. we don't happen. know yet. We don't no. know. There there, there are a few bids. It's not going to happen. That's what, that's why we don't know. <laughs> well, there are a few bids, and apparently, Steve Cohen is back in the mix of things after things reportedly uh, fell through. I believe. At some point last year, I believe, I think, I think before February the beginning of, of the year, year, things fell through. No, it was February of, of this year. It was February. Okay. My it bad. was actually right. one of the last, I think we were talking about it. And I think it was one of the last times you and I were together uh, right. doing an episode. Um, yes. I think that was when everything went to, went to the, uh, went to the shitter. No. Yeah. 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 Now, now that you mentioned that, I do remember that. Cause again, our, our last episode physically together was in the beginning of March. So I do, I do remember being actually together to talk yeah. about that, but now we're talking about it again. And Steve Cohen is back in the mix as are a rod and J Lo. Well, and we also have Harrison Blitzer, the owners of the uh, Sixers and the devils as well. So we've got a couple of bids here. So Harrison Blitzer, Bid 1.2 billion. That's right. That's billion with a B. I want to make that clear. Billion with a B. They bid 1.2 billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Aaron and J Lo bid 1.7 billion. Steve mm-hmm. Cohen has probably the highest offer so far with 2.6 billion dollars. That's the highest offer so far. But hold on, not so fast, because we have a new group apparently that's willing to buy the Mets. And that's a group that's involving the following three former or current NFL players. Hall of Fame linebacker Brian Urlacher, Travis Kelsey, yep. and 2014 NFL Offensive Player of the Year, DeMarco Murray. 
NFL players are willing to buy well, a baseball team. Well, let me. Now, let me they, let me they, they, they probably don't have that much money, do they? Hold on, hold on. Let me jump in front. Um, to I, I have to correct you because they are not their own group. They joined A Rod and J Lo's group. Okay, They're okay. That was my bad. That was my bad. No, no, it's fine. I just for those of you that don't know, it's Travis Kelsey, Brian Urlacher, Demarco Murray joined the A Rod and J Lo bid. There also are some NBA, some other players, including Joe Thomas, the. Oh yeah, the uh, the, the, the the Brown the Browns from offensive from the tackle. Cleveland Browns, Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards, yes, and Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards and Mason Plumlee. Um, those oh, are just wow. some of the guys that we know. <laughs> um, there's probably more, I would imagine. Um, but again, that's just that's what it is. So there's no, you know, they're not they're not their own group. They joined um, A Rod and J Lo's bid to help them get the Mets. Okay, that that that's what I thought. So I meant to say they're involved, but they're not their own they're separate. Involved. So that they're that was mis- in that was inform- that was information misinformation by me. I apologize. Yeah. But listen, if you're asking me who I think has a better shot at buying the Mets, if if the Wilpons are actually willing to give up the team, which, let's face it, they probably won't for the time being. But if there's a good chance somebody will, it's Steve Cohen. Because we talked about it when he first made a bid on the Mets. Things seemed to be going well. Then in February of this year, things fell through. And now he's back in the mix with his highest offer yet of $2.6 billion. And not only to buy the Mets... Apparently, he wants control of SNY as well, from what I read in an article on ESPN. I forget who actually wrote it, so I apologize. I want to give credit to who actually wrote it. But he wants to acquire the Mets and their network. So if Steve Cohen actually buys, if this actually works, he's basically, he's going to be the guy that everybody is going to listen to. And also... Clearly, he is not afraid to spend money. Just like the Yankees, he is not afraid to spend money. So if Steve Cohen buys the Mets, he is not going to be afraid to spend money to go out there and get big-name free agents to compete with the Yankees and possibly make the Mets competitive again. Not to say they weren't competitive last year towards the second half of the year, because they absolutely were. And you know what? The Mets have shown life and I think there is a terrific chance that they actually might make the playoffs this year considering the fact that's only a 60 game season but I digress could they do it in a 162 game season I think I think so but there's a lot of boundary that they'd have to that they'd have to uh, cross there but bottom line for me is I think Steve Cohen has a much better shot at getting the Mets than A-Rod or J-Lo and by the way can you imagine the amount of hatred by Yankees fans that A-Rod would get if he actually got the Mets. I mean, I mean really, I, I understand he's liked now. He's a likable guy. But if Yankee fans found out that he bought the Mets, I, I, I'm guaranteeing you right now, there would be a vitriol of hate for A-Rod because he's with the rival team in Queens. He's willing to spend money as well. He wants to help the Mets become relevant, just like Steve Cohen. But yeah. there is a much better chance, in my opinion, that Steve Cohen will actually make this work. So I'm actually going to be talking about this on the Mofopo Network podcast uh, later on today. So I'm glad that you wanted to talk about this. And, and by the way, go subscribe to that, by the way. Terrific stuff. Yes. So let me give you some more information because I did a, I did a, uh, I did a, I spent a lot of time researching about everything so I could have as much as I want. I am going to disagree with you. I think that A-Rod and J-Lo have the best chance, and I'll tell you why. What? According to the New York Post, according to New York Post, Met COO Jeff Wilpon, which is the son of friend Wilpon, says right. he would prefer to sell the team to A-Rod and J-Lo's group if the offer is close to the best bid at the end of the auction. So oh, as of wow. right now, and also the other thing is this. It's not $2.6 billion that Steve Cohen offered. He offered two point, He offered $2 billion flat. For the Mets and offered two million flat for SMY. Okay. SMY is not up for sale. That was just something that Steve Cohen apparently said he was interested in purchasing. Okay. This was actually originally um, announced through Charles Gasparino of Fox Business. He tweeted out back on July 9th that Steve Cohen is willing to pay two billion for the Mets and two billion for SMY. 
So that's so that that's what we have at the moment. That's clearly the highest bid by not a lot because to you know compare you know if you really look at it, you could say okay, he's technically trying to buy the Mets for four point for four billion dollars. Right. Because in theory, like the Mets and SMY, they're not a they're not together basically, but the Wilpons do own them both. I think that the Wilpons are fine with selling the team. I think as far as having control of SMY, they probably would like to keep on to that. But again, sometimes money does talk. Another thing that people should realize is this. First of all, Cohen is reportedly worth $13 billion. Yep. Yep. He is a diehard Mets fan, okay? So this guy clearly wants to achieve the dream of owning his own favorite team. And also, Cohen right now is an 8% holder, stockholder in the Mets already. And the original agreement that Cohen had with the Mets was that back in early 2020, so I think January timeframe, to increase his stake in the team to 80% over the next five years. Right. The problem or the reason why it didn't happen was that the Wilpons decided at the 11th hour to change some things. I don't think it was ever reported as to what exactly the changes were. Maybe it was just so that the Wilpons could have more control. But I think at the end of the day, That's now that they've, they've gone through several months of you know being in quarantine like everyone else, they've kind of been forced to think a lot more and really think about the realities is that both Jeff and Fred, in one way or another, I think want to sell the team. I really do. I think that they're being stubborn because they're trying to get everything. They're trying to pull a fast one on whoever is bidding for the team. So I think that I, I think that was the problem with why Steve Cohen didn't, you know, get the Mets originally. Right. And I give him credit that he's jumping right back into it. Like he's not afraid. And now he has more research. Now he understands exactly what he's getting himself into with the with the Will Ponds. So that's well, pretty he, much what he we're showed if he wants to make them more relevant again. Well, that's the thing. The the Will Ponds ever since the Bernie Madoff you know scandal ever since oh. then have never been have never been big on spending money because they lost a considerable amount of money from Bernie Madoff. That was that was one thing. So they've always been very very scared to spend big money. Also, it doesn't help when you have a player who hasn't played in over two de- almost two decades. Uh, you're still paying until 2025 or whatever uh, the hell it is. Um, happy Bobby Bonilla Day, by the way. Hold on. That's another thing I wanted to bring up. If this works and if I'm a Mets fan and Steve Cohen actually or wh- whoever buys the Mets, I'm a, I am saying to them, please give Bobby Bonilla all of his money and stop this nonsense. Because I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure they're sick of it at this point. They can't do it. They signed an agreement. The, the uh, reality is that they can't, they can't just give Bobby Bonilla all the money now. They have to do it over certain payments. That was the agreement that Bobby Bonilla no, is right, yeah. the Will Pond sign. I know that, money. but if, if I'm a Mets fan, that's what I'm thinking. That's it's what I'm like thinking that they should do. It's like $1.2 billion or whatever the hell. It is. It's like, it's not that much. It's not like he's totally, you know, basically if you look at the Mets starting rotation, like their top four pitchers in 2015, when they went to the world series, you have Matt Harvey, Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard, and Steven Matz. All of them were making less money than Bobby Bonilla was making that year. Like think about that. And I understand Mets fans would like to just give Bobby Bonilla the rest of the money and move forward. But I think because of the agreement, the Mets are still just going to be paying him until 2025. Yeah. So it's not, or 2032. It was one of those two numbers off the top of my head. I don't remember. Stand but by. it's not like it's going to be for much longer, okay? And again, it's, it's less than 1% of the money that you already have in your, you know, in your so, quote-unquote cap, even though there's no salary cap in baseball, you know, that you're paying. And you know the thing oh, that's but, but, but sorry to cut you off, yeah. Neil, but Bobby Bonilla Day officially will expire in 2035. 35. Okay. I knew I had the numbers. I was somewhere in the ballpark about that. No <laughs> you were question. close. You were close. Right. Right. I was close. Okay, so another 15 years. It's not the end of the uh, world. Fine. Fine. You, you got Fine. 15 more years of this garbage. But it's go not ahead, even go that ahead. garbage. Most people don't even remember it unless they're <laughs> brought up, unless it's brought up. But you know, obviously, if Steve Cohen does end up becoming the man that gets the Mets, obviously, the amount of money that will start flowing into the Mets is great. And if Steve Cohen is going to go off of what he said he wants to do, and that is to start spending money to get top-tier talent to the Mets, 
that's great. I mean, that, that's a phenomenal thing, and Mets fans can finally, like, relax, okay? We have to remember that the Wilpons tend to kind of screw this up at the last minute, as they've done several yeah. times. But Fred Wilpon seems like he's really, really determined now to sell the team. He said it, I think, back in, I want to say, April, that he really wanted to get this done. The Mets, have, uh, the Wilpons have already said that they would like to sell the team by the end of this year. So right. they may not sell the team until after the season, or, you know, they might sell it within the next week. They could sell it in the next five minutes. We, we, re we really don't know what exactly the deal is. There's no deadline for, or at least not reportedly, any deadline for the auction. So our, what, whatever we get, whatever we're told, is what everyone else knows. Uh, the only people that know about when the bidding ends are the people that have submitted bids and are involved in this. And if you don't mind, Jimmy, I'd like to analyze the three groups that we already know. Yeah, no, sure. Three bids that we know. Because there's two others that have – and I think I actually have it. Um, if my memory is correct, I may have written it down. I wrote down a lot. Um, but as far as I know, like, here's the thing. The – let, let's look at, all right, so again, I already mentioned Steve Cohen, so I don't think I have to go any further with that. Right. With J-Lo and A-Rod, here's the thing. First of all, Yankee fans are not going to flip out if A-Rod's the owner of the Mets. I really don't. First of all, you don't, you don't know fans, that. Most Yankee fans don't even like A-Rod. So if he went to the Mets, I don't think anybody would give a crap. For, and also, fun fact, A-Rod nearly went to the Mets before he uh, ended up. Yeah, that's true. Crazy. So this would be something that would be quote-unquote long overdue. Um, the other thing that people have to realize is that the Mets will then become basically the athletes franchise. And what I mean by that is that you look at it, you have A-Rod, you have Travis Kelsey, Brian Erlacher, DeMarco Murray, Joe Thomas, Bradley Beal, Mason Plumey. All those guys are going to have some percentage of ownership of the team because the, because A-Rod and J-Lo, I think put together something around the term of $3 million, $300 million dollars. Um, of their own money to buy the team. And clearly, very similar to Derek Jeter when he tried to buy and eventually did buy the Miami Marlins, he needs other people to get involved. Right. Now, these athletes are not going to help him get over the hump. They obviously also, I think, are working with Chase Bank as well or Chase Investors, to be more exact. So that's fine, and it'll work out. Um, when I look at the situation with A-Rod and J-Lo, as I mentioned before, and it was reported by the New York Post, Jeff Wilpon said he would prefer to sell the team to A-Rod and J-Lo. Now, why is that? I'll tell you why. Because I'm sure that the Wilpons are not fully trusting of Steve Cohen, especially after what happened the first time around. They look at A-Rod and J-Lo, and they see something as the Mets could then become the most popular franchise in baseball right away mm. because of the celebrity impact that the team would have by their new owners and who else is involved with the team. I don't know what A-Rod A -Rod and J-Lo's plan would be with regards to how exactly they would, you know, spend money. I don't know how much money they would be able to implement into the team. When you look at it from the terms of who could really help the Mets get a lot more money in to spend on free agents, it makes sense that it's Steve Cohen. Because again, reportedly, I'm going to say this again, reportedly, Steve Cohen is worth $13 billion. So right. you have to take that into consideration that, and he's already said publicly that he wants to spend money and help the Mets win. And that's right. great because Mets fans want to hear that. A-Rod is a very, very smart baseball person. He really understands the game. He under, I think at many times, especially because he works as an advisor for the Yankees, he understands what it's going to take to build a winning franchise. And A-Rod wants to be an MLB owner. And the Mets, you know, you think about it. They are, yes, they play in Queens, but guess what? It's New York City. It's big time. A-Rod, for the most part, lives in New York. Right. This is an opportunity for him. This is a very good opportunity for him to stay in the light. Now, does that mean his time as a broadcaster ends? Probably, I would imagine. I could be wrong because I know Jessica Mendoza was an advisor to the Mets while still working for ESPN. She no longer works for the Mets, but still. I think that it would be great because A-Rod, since he's such a smart baseball person, not saying Steve Cohen isn't, but if he is, he's going to end up hiring guys that, that think a lot like him and understand the game of baseball very well. And I think he would do yeah. things that 
the Wilt Ponds don't do. So I think like they would start to honor the Mets more. I think it's unfair that the 86 Mets don't get as honored as they should. Because let's face it, they're the last World Series team. Thank you. And, Thank you. So, Mookie Wilson, Keith Hernandez, guys like that have expressed publicly that they don't like the fact that the 86 Mets players are not more involved with the team. Look at the Yankees. The Yankees always have, you know, some of their greatest players come back during spring training and be advisors to the team. A-Rod's a freaking advisor to the Yankees. He's always at spring training helping out the young guys. Like, that's what I would like to see the Mets do more. So when I look at that, I think from that standpoint, the oh, Yankees, and not not, not to mention the Yankees. The, sorry, Neil. The Yankees also have Old Timers Day. What do the Mets have to honor their past players? I mean, I don't know if the Mets would ever do that. Would be surprised though. They probably could. Um, the reality is simply this: from a publicity standpoint, and from you know really making noise, A Rod and J Lo's group is more interesting than Steve Cohen's. But if the but if the Wilpons want to do it from a business standpoint and get as much money back as possible, it would make more sense to go with Steve Cohen. And to be very honest with you about Joshua Harris and David Blitzer, it's just not going to happen. No, the, they no, already own no. the 76ers and the Devils. They, no disrespect, they're not making a considerable amount of money, maybe more from the 76ers and the Devils, and they only offered $1.2 billion. They're, they're a lot further away from where they need to be than the other groups. I don't know what the other groups are. Um, they haven't been uh, put out in the public, as far as we know. Um, and they probably won't unless they buy the team um, or they decide to say it after whoever buys the team. But I think right. bottom line is that my money is on A-Rod and J-Lo getting the team when this is all said and done. I mean, it, it, would, be, it would be very, very interesting for A-Rod and J-Lo. You, you, you are right about that. But I don't, I don't know, man. My, my gut tells me that my gut tells me that the Will Ponds are probably going to go the more business route and go with Steve Cohen. But hey, I could be wrong. We will see. I could be wrong. I think you also have to take into consideration this is that the Will Ponds have always been an ownership that does things that don't always fully make sense and they do irritate the crap out of Mets fans. That's true. I'm yeah. not saying that any Mets, I think Mets fans. If you look at the two main uh, groups or people that are interested in the Mets, this is a, in a way, it's a can't lose situation. I think that it would be great either way. I think certainly, like I said, publicity wise, if the, if A-Rod and J-Lo become the owners, I think a lot of people would actually be excited for it. A-Rod, again, is a very smart baseball mind. Um, if you haven't watched any of his videos on like his YouTube channel or seen him analyze the things that he the, the things that he knows about mm. the game as a whole is incredible. His, his, Actually, incredible. His, his baseball IQ. I couldn't get out for a minute there. Sorry. His baseball IQ is off the charts. It's probably unlike right. any other guy I've ever seen talk baseball. Right. Exactly. So, I think from that standpoint, A Rod would know. I think when it comes, I think if they were to buy the team, this is what I would see happen. J-Lo and probably the other unknown investors, you know, the guys from Chase Bank, um, they would probably be involved in the business side of the Mets, clearly. I think they would just make A-Rod just be focused squarely on the team itself and how to better the team. I think that's what it looks like. The only issue with, with them is that how much money could the Mets get or how much more money could they put into this team in order to make them better from a standpoint of maybe getting free agents. Right. I will say this. Unlike Michael Jordan, who is the owner of the Charlotte Hornets, I think that if players in the game right now saw someone like A-Rod as an owner in New York, in a big market, you know, with the Mets, I think that would excite some people. I think that would interest the All hell right. out of some people. They would say, you know what? I want to give this a shot. And you know what? The Mets are not that bad. The Mets have some no. real talent. You have Pete Alonso. You have Jeff McNeil, Michael Conforto. You still have Jacob DeGrom, arguably one of the best, possibly top three pitchers in baseball right now. Mm. Probably the best pitcher in New York because I can't say Garrett Cole yet because he hasn't pitched in New York. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have exactly. Noah Syndergaard is still pretty solid. Steven Matz is okay. I mean, their, their starting rotation is not phenomenal. Their bullpen needs work. Um, but as far as their, their lineup is concerned, they're, they're probably a very solid team if they stay healthy. 
In a 60-game season, like you mentioned, I think the Mets could compete. I think they could very much surprise teams because if you look at if you look at this situation with the 60-game season, if you start off on a high note, if you're really hot out of the gate, the chances of you making the playoffs are very, very high. Yep. Even if you have a collapse, you still have a pretty good chance of making yep. it. In. Oh, oh, and by the way, not to mention that unlike the Yankees, the Mets can actually get clutch hits. Just saying. Well, I haven't watched enough Mets games to determine that. Um, as far as guys hitting for average, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. they certainly have more guys to do. Exactly uh, my point. Exactly. Not Pete Alonso, because Pete Alonso bats 240, and that's not, you know. But then again, he's a power hitter, and that's just yeah. like, if you're not Mike Trout, you're not going to hit over 300 and also have, like, 38 home runs a year. It's just not, that's like. That's true, yeah. That's the true. The only other guy that can do that is probably Christian Yelich. But, again, that's a, that's not that. I mean, he didn't, I don't think he batted over 300. I could be wrong. But. I thought he did. I'm pro- uh, well, then again, his season was cut short because he got hurt. So yeah, which is a shame. Like, yeah, it is. And I hope that he stays fully healthy. Now that he signed a big deal with the Brewers, he's going to – that's going to be fun. I mean, I mean, I think the Brewers could really, you know, surprise some people this year. But going back to the Mets, again, I think from the business standpoint, as far as getting a huge amount of money invested into the team with an owner that, that, that actually says he wants to spend and wants to get top-tier talent to come to the Mets, you got you to gotta hope that Steve Cohen wins the bid. Because not only is he offering $2 billion for the Mets, he's also saying, oh, I'll give you an extra $2 billion if you give me SMY. Right. If the Wilpons don't want to sell SMY, that might be the deal breaker. That could be the deal breaker. They might just say, no, we're good, and they might move on. But if, it, but if the reports from the Post and a couple other places is true, if it ends up being where, like, the bid for, from A-Rod and J-Lo goes from 1.7 to maybe 1.8 or 9, and it's between 1.9 and 2 billion. I got to be honest with you, Jimmy. The reports then would pretty much guarantee almost that the Mets are going to go with A Rod and J. Yeah. And I would feel bad for Steve Cohen because he's really, he's done nothing wrong. He's literally said, take my money. You right. know, it's like the old uh, Futurama uh, Fry. Uh, Shut man, up and right? take my money. Shut up and take my money. Right. That's exactly what he's doing. He's like, just. Just take this money and let me have the team. Um, I don't think at this point it's about the money anymore. I think it's just about the fact of power. I also think that Aaron and JLo would still give them give the Wilpons some form of control, which is what you don't want as a Mets fan. You want the Wilpons to be gone. You want them to be completely out of the way. Get the hell out of here. We're done. Steve Cohen is not willing to do that. Steve Cohen wants full control. And the money that he's offering pretty much states, I want full control, and that's it. You're not – like, you're done. With A-Rod and J-Lo, they might be more willing to do that. And that's – that's, that could be the reason why – that could be another reason why A-Rod and J-Lo could win. So, you know, I just hope the Mets sell the damn team, you know. And you know Same. what? If they sell the damn team, here's the – I'll tell you this right now. If the Wilpons end up selling their team, you don't think that, you know, someone like, uh, what is it, um, James Dolan could maybe consider it? Because think oh about this. Oh, my God. They're James Dolan to the Wilpons. They're very similar. Why, why would you want to contaminate another franchise? You're already contaminating the Knicks. No, 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 no. Hear me. No, no, no. What I said was this. I'm not saying that, like, James Dolan is going to all of a sudden jump in and be like, I want to buy the Mets. No, no. I'm, what I'm saying is this. If the Wilpons were to sell the Mets, you don't think that James Dolan would then start to think, hmm, maybe I could make a deal with somebody and get a good deal. I think that – and the problem is, is that – the problem with Knicks is that they're worth a lot more than the Mets. I think yeah. the are something, they're worth something like $4.2 billion. Yep. So some – I mean – And they're irrelevant. I don't know if, if Steve Cohen is a Knicks fan, but, I mean, Steve Cohen could offer a lot of money for mm. the Knicks if he wanted to go that route. But I think Cohen is determined as a Mets fan and as a guy who wants to spend his money. I think he's going to be very determined, and I think he's going to fight to the very last second to try to get the Mets. You know what? I think that Steve Cohen could still also be involved with the Mets, even if A-Rod and J-Lo buy the team. Because, again, Steve Cohen is an 8% stockholder in the team already. 
Right. For all we know, A-Rod and J-Lo could say, you know what, we really love your passion for the team and we want you to be involved in the organization going forward. So we want to increase your percentage of the team to 25% or 30%, you know, to give him a, some more control. And maybe he'll jump on with that. But I think for Steve Cohen, he primarily wants to own the team himself. He right. really does. He really does. Um, A-Rod and J-Lo, they may be more willing to get other people involved. I don't know. But I think A-Rod, if you were to get the team, he would definitely focus his attention 100% on baseball. That would be his job. His job would be focus on the team, make them better, let's go win. And I want that to happen. I, everybody's going to hate me. But my favorite player growing up in baseball was Alex Rodriguez. And this, and this comes as a shock for a lot of people because they say, why are you a fan of somebody who took Royce? Okay? I understand where people are coming from, but I look at it this way. A-Rod has done a great job of kind of resurrecting his image since that whole thing. I agree. And I think that he's very genuine. I think he really honestly cares about the game of baseball itself. I think he recognizes the fact that he screwed up big time. And I think he's trying his best to continue to revive his image. And I think doing something like that. And plus he paid the price for sitting out a year. He did. And I will say this. He was compared all the time to Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter was Mr. Yankee. He was, he was the constant professional. Jeter's been criticized a huge amount for the way he has acted since he became the owner or part owner of the Miami Marlins. Yeah. It's almost like the roles have been reversed because when A-Rod was on the Yankees, he was disliked. Everybody gave him crap. He didn't have the world's greatest attitude. It's almost like now out of retirement, the roles have been reversed. People like A-Rod a lot more as a, you know, personality wise than they like it with Jeter. Could A-Rod's whole attitude of things change if he became an owner? Possibly. But I do think that A-Rod is doing this not for publicity. I think he truly wants to own a team. I think he cares about winning. And guess what? If you can make the Mets relevant again, and Mets could go on and win a championship with A-Rod as their owner. Oh. A-Rod's going to be one of the most respected baseball people in the game. And people are going to look at him as a New York baseball, you know, not God, but definitely an icon because he helped the Mets get back to being a relevant franchise. Yep. A guy who played for the crosstown rival New York Yankees. And you don't think that A-Rod would have some fun trying to compete with the Yankees and uh, trying to do that? I mean, He would. He definitely thing, would. I'm going to be honest with you. Owning the Mets or being a part of the Mets is a high-risk, high-reward move. Yeah. Whether you're a player, a manager, a general manager, a partner in the organization, an owner, whatever. It's a high risk, high reward thing because if you can make it work and you can have success and be a competitive World Series team, because of the fact that people are so tired of talking about the Yankees in, in the New York media and they want to talk about the Mets, you're going to be swimming in dough, my friend. You're going, to be, you're going to be the talk of the town. You're going to be on the front page, the middle page, and the back page of every single newspaper in, in the entire state. I mean, it's going to be – so, I think, I think that A-Rod and J-Lo have a very high chance. I think that they probably have a higher chance than Steve Cohen, primarily because of the reports that I'm hearing. Um, as far as the other groups, Steve Cohen is probably the only other one that has a legitimate shot. Joshua Harris, David Blitzer, just focus on the two teams you have and forget yeah. about them. It's not going to happen. And you really don't want to own the Mets when, you're already, when, you, when you have one diddly squat with either the Devils or the 76ers at this point. So why don't you just why don't you just focus on winning with them before you start doing other things? Um, <laughs> and I don't know what the other two groups are. I have no idea. I, they probably are smaller groups that we have never heard of. But I think reality, it's going to come down to J Ayla, J Lo and A Rod. I was going to say J Rod, which I guess you can kind of <laughs> kind of. I, I mean, we could call it J Rod if you want to. Yeah, you know, that. that could work. Oh, you got that. You got Steve, and you got Steve Cohen. I think it's going to come down to those two. And I can't give you a guarantee as to when this is going to be announced. I have no idea. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It's definitely going to be very, very interesting. By the way, 
you brought up Christian Yelich earlier. He batted 329 last year with 44 homers, 97 ribbies. So and how many games? That, like 132? I think, yeah, 100, around, that, around 130. Yeah. Right. So very, very impressive for Christian Yelich. But bottom line is, I, I think the Will Pons are going to go the more business route and say Steve Cohen. Neil says A-Rod and J-Lo, or J-Rod, as we like to call him now. Harrison Blitzer, you can kick yourself to the curb because it's not going to happen. Let us know who you think will officially buy the Mets once this is all said and done. Let us know what you think on Twitter, at Bottom Line WMCX, at The NVP Show. Use the hashtag Bottom Line. Don't forget to leave a voice message on Anchor as well. Download the app, create a free account, or go to Anchor. FM and please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a like and a comment down below this video if you're watching on YouTube and be sure you subscribe on Apple, Google, and Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. It is there. Just search for the Bottom Line Podcast, but please include my first name, which is Jimmy. I know that we said we would do top five, top five overpaid athletes this week. I yeah. promise you we will get to that on Thursday. So we do apologize. We will get to that on July 16th. So you can blame Jimmy for that. He didn't have his list ready. <laughs> I, w- I had mine. I'm ready to go. Yeah, that was that, that, that's, that's more lazy. That's more laziness on my part this time. And I, I, I always come with my research, but this time I was lazy with my list. So I promise you, once I have my list, we will be ready to go Shame on, on July you. 16th. Shame on you. you yeah, bring, yeah. Bring shame to this family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, why don't, you t- why don't you take a rock? Hit me on the head with it. That's how lazy I am. For Neil Villapiano, I'm Jimmy Finizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast. See you in the next episode. Peace out.